supplements. Yeah, we'll have you'll, you'll be um, reviewing everything you're doing. Yeah. That, that, I, like, I like that input. Me and Michelle Mears, we have a neighbor, yeah. Oh! Yeah, I knew Michelle and me. Yeah. And so she's going to do a lot of the uh, tech review, and then. Because she's with the city of Rochester, right? Right. And, and she'll give you the stuff, and I'll come and read it, and put it in the necessary. Yeah, we like that feedback. Yeah. She'll be attending every meeting then. Yeah. Okay, you're awesome. So you're in town quiet? Yes. Oh, hi. <laughs> I, I'm super fast. How are you? Glenn. Hi, Glenn. Nice to meet you. Yeah. I think we've seen each other around yes. here. We got this button. It's a little past seven, uh, so we're going to start the, uh, the meeting, and uh, I think I'll start off by having the uh, reporting secretary um, begin, perhaps, with a roll call. Okay. So, uh, present are John Hinsman, Chair, uh, Kathleen Kendall, Ex Officio, Tom Clark, Land Use Administrator, Land Use Administrator, Title to be Determined, Yes. Um, Kevin Haynes, Glenn Chase, are you going to be the or an alternate? It's whether you're naming or not. Okay. Um, and I'm going to stop the English. <laughs> um, so first on the agenda is the public hearing for the lot line adjustment for Norman and Wanda Gadman. Okay. All right. Um, first I need to take care of Glenn. Any advice on that? Full of um, um is full position. Yeah, um, yes. She is a full member. Full so member. we have a quorum, so it's um but seeing as how there's a vacancy, I don't see a harm in having a full board okay. yeah. and making him a full member. Uh, That's what I was my inclination. Yes. Yeah. Okay. All right. So for tonight tonight's meeting to be a full member. I'll make that motion. Second. Was there a second? Okay, thank you. Okay. All right, so that's a full everything. So um, we're starting off with the Gaggins. So uh, if uh, they could approach and identify themselves for us. Okay, quick so. I apologize. I got plans on the board over there. I'm not sure what you want to do. If, I'm sorry? Maybe we can set them up somewhere over on the side. There we go. My name is Joel Reynolds. I work with Norway Plains. We represent Norman and his wife, Wanda, and his aunt is the Dagging Family and Local Trust. They've chosen to do a lot line adjustment. Norman and Wanda's lot is, is this. Excuse me. Along the stash line here, this is all the lines. His aunt is a odd looking shape lot right here. And what he's doing is doing a lot of revision so that he'll get this area right here, which is 31,101 square feet. And his aunt's lot is going to be a square lot now. The lot size, the needs minimum lot size, one acre is 47,463, so it's a large acre. We've had to get subdivision approval from the state because of this lot line adjustment. And I can't receive that today, by the way, so we're all good with that. They call for the service by sewer, us, individual wells and septic systems. I don't know if there's any questions, it's pretty simple. Okay. Uh, any 
anyone from the board have any questions for these gentlemen? I think there was a question on the application about the um, the amount of acreage the um, to be con conferred conveyed um, in the in the subdivision and that it didn't. Right. You, you and I email about that. It's just, you, you and she email okay. about that. Yeah. It, it's just a surrounding thing. So if you take it out three places, the acreage out to three places, it works. So I revised my plan so it goes up to three places now and all the numbers. Okay, so do we have those revised plans? I, I didn't. Well, the, 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 the numbers that is revised. This is the, these old numbers are still right. It's just that it's around. Around it again. The recorded plan is in three places. Anyway, 
uh, some of them by twice as much. So okay. um, <laughs> we really don't. Well, that's all I'm is. <laughs> I like you. You got. See, it's one of those things, man. You know, it didn't. It never really occurred to me that I was going through it. I think I said it in the email as well. Why not exactly? It was all in your tongue. <laughs> in any case, in any case, yes, we don't um, have any major objections or any objections. I mean, we still have a couple of things waiting for the uh, water pressure test, um, and it has to come through the state, right? So, I got your water pressure report. I can tell you how I came to that. Um, I don't need to know how you came to that. I'm going to tell you what we're going to do with it. Okay. Let's <laughs> 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 Um, the superintendent has been direct of the water sewer district has been directed not to, to not work with us about this subdivision, and instead the commissioners, who are um, not the technical experts about such things. So we need to assure that you get state approval for the expansion of the water district according to whatever the state requirements are and I'm hoping that the commissioners will facilitate that with you for you. The pressure test in and of itself is to my mind not adequate. There needs to be um, and, I, and I'm starting this conversation with Cynthia Clevens of the state who's the um, in the water bureau. There need to be um, engineering studies or drawings that prove that the water pressure is good at sill level. Level that you know it, it's it's one thing. What what the pressure is now is one thing. What is the pressure for seven new homes on the second story when three people are showering at the same time? For you know, how do we know that the water pressure will um, that the addition of these new homes will not be detrimental to the water pressure of the neighbors, I guess is what I'm saying. That's what I would personally like to see. Um, but regardless of that, we need to make sure that all of the I's are dots and T's are crossed with regard to the state approval of the expansion of the district. Um, is that something I, I, I can work on then? Yes, I'm going to try to help you with that, and I hope that the commissioners will try to help you with that. But in the end, um, I would suggest to the planning board that we, as a board, need to see whatever documentation from the state that says that they have what they need with regard to not just the snapshot in time for that location of the pressure, but can the system support seven new homes at that location and maintain pressure for those new homes and the existing homes. So what I did based on the last meeting we had where, well, the, the um, what was it, the um, professional meeting that we had was I called uh, Ray and ultimately he handed me to someone named Clem and Vern and Vern told me that how he handled this was, it was the letter that we got um, tested it several different ways and one of the things as I was with them is they open up one hydrant and they got 950 gallons a minute, plenty, well, more than you would see on other streets that, um, or, or similar to. He then went down the road and opened up a second hydrant and left them both open and tested the pressure of the second hydrant when the other one was open. There was a name for this to see how much it lost while something was bleeding that heavy. And so the letter he wrote, he's, he said he's been doing it for 30 years, Mick Construction uses them for all of their, this type of testing, um, was it, in the letter he wrote, he gave the results, and then he gave a summary in his professional opinion that it would be able to, to handle these new homes. I would definitely take it to the next level, but this, Mick Construction said, this is how you do it. You know, um, Obviously, if the state now has to get involved because a, a district is expanding, I didn't know that, and I'll definitely... The district, the, the state always has to approve the expansion of any district. So I'll and definitely look into that. No, normally, the licensed operator would be involved in that, but I think since the licensed operator is not going to be involved in that, then we really need to work directly with the state to know that everything is. I'll learn more about that. And I will too. <laughs> <laughs>
<laughs> <laughs> <laughs> <laughs> <laughs> <laughs> <laughs> <laughs> now, from the conversation we had with Ray, was Wright Pierce is the consultant to the water district that has the modeling done. Um, do we have access to them? That's a question for the commissioners. Okay. Yeah, because, again, the, 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 it's fairly easy to go add an extra leg onto that model as opposed to recreating the model. Um, so that was the intent of working with Ray, but as you say, Ray got shut down before he could facilitate that. I, I am on, as far as I know, I'm on the agenda for the water commissioner's meeting tomorrow night. Um, I don't know if going to it and trying to introduce this other layer or just leave it and me and you work behind the scenes with the state. I don't want to get an angry mob involved or, or I, mean, I don't know what's going to happen at that meeting tomorrow. Nobody knows what's going to happen at that meeting tomorrow. But this is going to come up. They're, they're, they're based on this test by this reputable company. I believe that the commissioners are going to sign my request that my subdivision, there's adequate pressure and uh, whatever the things they test for. Flow. And I don't mean to discount that, and I yeah. think you absolutely ought to have that yeah. conversation with them. I just think that as far as the town is concerned, that um, given that the pressure test was not done in the presence of the operator who's licensed to you know, who knows the system, um, but instead was facilitated by elected officials, that the town needs to ensure that this subdivision with regard to the water is not the detriment of the neighbors. And, and not just that you're getting water service, but that it meets whatever the state requires. So by all means, I still think you need district approval. Well, let's take it to the but, next but also separately, we need to make sure that you get the state approval. Um. Now, was that was uh, Tom? Were you continuing speaking when this issue? No, sir. No, I'm I'm all set. Okay. All right. Um, members of the board, does anyone have any questions about the uh, for the applicant at this point? Did anybody want to look at the plans? Have they changed? I mean, I did read about the um, the changes with the conservation of the 250 and the um, the open space, not cutting and things of that nature. Well, it's a covenant, but well, so so I, I have those, and um, I was going to distribute those to the planning board, and by all means, you can share a copy with the applicant. But I want to know what the these um, most current plans are the same that were emailed in the past, so there's been no changes. Okay, then I, I took one home. Okay, so these are just um, my personal go at um, suggested revisions for the planning board to consider in the covenant, which um, mostly is, is typographical errors, but um, there are two main points that I thought were really worth the board considering requiring of the applicant and um, one of those is um, I really thought that the zoning ordinance said that there was no cutting within 100 feet of the river. I'm not finding that and so I wanted to reference that but seeing as that it doesn't seem to actually exist I think that given the conversation at the ZBA and the concern for the river and the conservation and um, the will to, I don't, I don't, I, I think it's still in the best interest of the town and what the residents would want to see about the river um, to, to not have cutting with 100 feet. So I, I wanted the planning board to consider that and then also um, for either the whole development but particularly for lot four. I thought that it would be fair to relinquish the right of that those future owners to go to the ZBA for um, a variance from the setback requirements um, to the river because you the the 250 foot setback to the river will already be encroached upon um, by 50 feet by in that lot specifically, but will be near you know. Um, that, that river setback of 250 feet is really close for all those lots, but particularly for lot four, um, I just see that we're, this development 
in this current state is creating potential future hardships for people in not being able to put sheds and decks and other things in their backyard. So that's what those re revisions represent. So are the, are the revisions agreeable to, the, to you? Uh... As far as I know, this, the state has a 50-foot no-cut-anything zone, and in the 100 feet it's very restricted. So we're saying um, make the 100 feet of all of the frontage a no-cut-anything zone. And then you're saying um, that someday down the road, some of these lots may try to meander in and ask for further variances. We're going to specifically state the lot that has got one cannot do that. Is that understood? Then yes, I'd be agreed. I think it's. I think those are reasonable. Um, but didn't you want that co the covenants for all of the lots, all as lots. far as anyone building an expanded deck or a shed or a garage? Any further to the so they go into the that. understanding that they can never apply for that on all the lots. I, I would like for the board to right. consider all the right. lots, but at the minimally, I think absolutely lot four, since the building itself is already 50 feet within the river setback. The ZBA really struggled with allowing that variance because they valued that river setback, and I think that language in the covenant would be consistent with the intent. Of the and on the other point, you said you had no, good, no problem with being in the covenants about the 100 no cut setback. You have no problem with that. So even if it's not a town regulation, I can agree with it. it. And he agrees to it, it can still be part of the covenant. So it doesn't matter whether we've referenced it in our own documentation. Well, that's what I'm saying. It's it doesn't matter if, not. if yeah. the owner of the, if the developer is willing to abide by that, it's really no point. So that can be included in the covenants regardless. I would also like them on the plans. That. That would be two. my recommendation, is to have those two things printed on the plan as well. And, and, excuse me, if I may, this is consistent with the subdivision on Wentworth Street. There's a 200 foot no cut deed restriction. It wasn't anything in the town ranks. So this is consistent so with that. So deed, covenant, and plan would be my recommendation. And, and I, I know Mike doesn't have an issue with the variance thing, but legally I'm not, I'm not sure you can tell people they can't. Go to the CBA, can't, can you? I mean, I. I, I My really assumption is they were just saying no. <laughs> well, so. <laughs> but why put them through the stress? <laughs> you're, you're right. I, I, it can be anything can be challenged in court. Yeah, and I'm, uh, again, he's agreeable, so I'm not. I'm not disputing. Right, if you were forcing it on me, it probably wouldn't be. But, but I'm, <laughs> I'm just saying is that if that if that is in fact something we can dictate. So we can expend your legal dollars to find out, or we can put it in there and wait for it to be challenged. It's up to money. <laughs> I'm agreeable to putting it in there. And I won't challenge it. I think if I agree to it, it changes completely. I put it in my covenant on my own by free will, but maybe not, because I'm still making the decision for people that I don't know. But again, the board can say no to if someone tries to push through that and request a variance. But, but I get where you're going with it, and it's a lot of my own drive for this property as well. I, I want to protect the waterfront. I don't want, I, I want people to sit up and enjoy the nature, but I don't want them bursting into it either. You'll see that as this goes on. Okay, great, thank you. Thank you. Uh, does anybody else have any comments from the board or questions? Okay. Tom, there was another um, drainage. The drainage um, somewhere, I think, between lots two and three, is it? There's a drainage. Um, there was, yeah. yeah, that's where our, we held it from our the collection system that we do. We have a pipe that goes down and discharges to the. There's an existing runoff that goes that leaves the property, so we channeled all of the runoff to the same location. After, after we detain and treat it and do all that stuff. That, that, that Which is, so draining onto the neighbors. It, it is, yes. yes. That's, that's the corner lot on the northwest corner. It was that it was a little tiny thin strip of his land that was behind. Whoops, that's, that's plan B. <laughs> it comes down, we, we have a, a bioretention here in the cul de sac. We have another one here. And after we, we, we treat and detain, uh, we, we have this pipe here that discharges down, and this is the existing 
ditch that comes through and leaves the property now, so it feeds in and leaves in the same location at a, at a lower rate and volume than, than currently. That, that's that's always our threshold. Is, is is we can't alter the drainage for the for the neighbor. I'm actually taking a picture of it. It's it's like a stream. It's a stone bedded indentation that has been obviously. For, you can see. I tried to get where you can see it going through the property and you can see the water that it's going into. Mm -hmm. But it's a it's a contained with edges, stone bottom. Um, the water must have flowed for maybe during. Yeah, it it was. And get, get the water that collected from his, his barn there was all directed there. I don't know whether there was a channel there before that, but cer certainly the barn has, has been draining there for quite some time. Have you discussed this issue with that property owner? No. No. Again, it's, it's where our water goes now. It's we, not any worse, or it's less than it was prior to us. Yeah, we, we can, again, from our drain, drain study, that, that's that's the area that we did discharge it. That, that, that again, our, our, our mandate is that we that we not change the existing condition. So we we even our report to, to uh, so the consultants have shown free to storm uh, that both on on a rate and volume we, we decrease the amount of flow to that to that location. So we did that for the two, the ten, and the twenty-five, uh, both rate and rate and volume, but. Again, there's this water that, water that leaves the site there today, and we're, we're permitted to, again, we can't prevent our, our water from draining there. It's, it's that, that, that's not in his purview to stop that. So it's, as long as we're, we're, we're not changing that. So are you feeling you have an easement by prescription, or? No, no it's water. It's the existing drainage. <laughs> no, right. <laughs> it goes, water goes where the water goes. True. And, and, and and in this case, it goes it goes to that location has, has for for quite some time, and, and again, it would be prohibitive for him to come in and tell us we can't that that water can't come onto his property. But that's that's where our water is. The state is full of down slope of others that our water drains onto people. It's just a fact of life. Have we assured in the plans that we're not exacerbating that? That, that is the road really pitched toward the retention ponds on the other side of the street? Uh, uh, absolutely, absolutely. I mean, that, that's what Jay's gone through. Is is our, our design specifically direct the water to the bio retention areas for to get the proper treatment and the, and the proper. Can you the show us that on, on the plan? Okay. Absolutely. We've got. Yeah, this, this, this plan shows as, as much as we can get on one plan. Tom, can you open that? Sorry. What this has, taken the bioretention area in, in the middle here, uh, from the road construction plans on that would be your sheet C1, shows that the grading from, from here, all grades, the middle, middle all the way up from the edges of the right of way. And that was one comment that Jay had us add a couple of spot grades on the edge of here to ensure that the road, the road is pitched this way, and we added these grades to ensure that it would get all, all the way over to the bio retention area. And, and here you have your road that's crowned, and it sheets off of your crown with a uh, swale here that comes down, and a swale here that comes down. So all that road runoff, 100% of the, the road runoff is collected, is, is treated in the bioretention area, is infiltrated, and the larger storms uh, has has some small amount of runoff that uh, goes, goes through, through the pipe. And, and yeah, it's, if we look at oops, excuse me, the smaller storms, uh, the two-year storm pre-construction, that there's 1.13 CFS that, that, that leaves the property at that spot. And there's there's 0.88 post construction. So again, that that's our, our mandate is, is that that has to be equal or less than the pre construction flow. Um, now Jay's plan were a little more detailed from the standpoint that we break out. Um, we provide him this sheet, Victoria Point post construction drainage plan that shows the sub catchment areas where the high points are, the low points are, and how which water goes goes where. But he, he had the benefit of a little more detail than, than goes in the construction okay. plans, but that, that's the, uh, this is developed from the construction plans. And, uh, you know, if we look at the 
specifically uh, that pipe that uh, comes out of drain manhole one that can be with you for one one second. Um, we actually have again a diminished flow to that point, but the majority of that is, is still flowing off coming through that pipe, but but uh, flow directly from these lots here but still naturally come to that point and not necessarily the road runoff that's directed there. But again, it's an existing condition that... Uh, if you are not making it worse in, in and improving. Right. And we we, we are, are in fact lessening the flow. I know that's key. Post-development has to be equal to or less than. And I'm thinking if there hasn't been any issue with this in the past, it could be considered an easement by prescription. It's something that's probably, you know, just been used forever and ever and no one said anything. Well, possibly that it's, it's built the way that it is with, with the ground um, swell because it's had problems in the past in that area and run off at certain storms. Um, now, impervious area from the old barn here, um, when you add in the new houses, and this will all be impervious exactly. here, is that correct? It is. So, the, basically, the, the driveways and the um, house uh, footprints will be less than the barn right now, or... Well, the, 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 the number one factor that, that, we, that we use in, uh, uh, to find it here is, is the, 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 the uh, CM number, the runoff curve number that for asphalt is, is uh, the 98 version impervious. For gravel, it's 89. Yeah. Uh, for a roof, is again that 98. It's not 100% impervious, but it's But our, our, our post construction. When you take into consideration that we dug up a, a lot of driveways that were gravel roads that went throughout the property and we took down that large barn, our CN number post construction is actually equal to where it was pre construction. So it's a different makeup, there's more, more pavement, less gravel, but the net result is um, the, uh, the, the amount of water that the site can absorb is equal post construction as well as pre construction. I just want to make sure I understand what you said. I think Glenn made a good point. What I heard Glenn ask you was, does the, um, when you look at the, the, the footprint of the houses and impervious surfaces versus the barn and impervious surfaces, is it uh, more or less than the barn? And I, I think I heard you saying more, but something. Can you well, clarify that for me? That, that isn't something that, that, we, that we analyze. That was the culmination of all those factors that there was gravel coming out, and there was building coming out, and we putting in buildings and pavement. It was a different mix of just comparing the footprint of the barn to the footprint of. But the old footprint of everything worked out to be the same as the new footprint. When you took out the barn and the driveways and you put in the road and the houses, you said it came out the same. It, that's a simplification, but yes. <laughs> it, it, it's a little more complicated I it, 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 because it, it, again, we took out gravel, uh, we took out more gravel, we placed it with less pavement, and they, they equal up that, that type of, that, that's the form that we went through, but we did not do that comparison of the footprint of the barn to the footprint of the houses. And in terms of this drainage issue, was this something that exists, is this on the area or was this caused, or is it near the area where the barn it was built, and was it caused in part by the building of the barn, which may have not been done with town permission? No, I don't believe, don't believe so. It, it looks like it's existed longer than that. It, it, I guess it, the area that exists it is in an undisturbed area of the site. I see it. It, it exists in, on the abutters property in an undisturbed area of his site. Uh, I don't believe that, but but certainly the, the runoff from the barn now does go through it. Whether it's exacerbated, it, I, I don't I don't know. But it looks like 
the channel itself has been there for, for quite some time. I took a couple of pictures, and it's actually the terrain of two hills coming together. So I think that the water is just naturally okay. does that. It finds that groove, and it's, it's created, you know, over the years, it's created this very distinct channel. But if you look on either side of it, it's higher. Right. So yeah. it was a low spot that is just where I think gravity has, has taken it. I don't think that it's an issue. It's just it collected together there and always has. It's probably a good thing. Um, and it's on a very thin corner of his property that he doesn't maintain at all. No, not anywhere as near any, any other buildable part um, <coughs> because it gets very thin, thin there as well. So I've, we can also do a site walk into the board if we find value in that. Um, and we would do that prior prior to final approval at some point, or on the way to final approval. Or any time, yeah, any time in between. Okay. Um, all right, so before I turn over to uh, for public comment, uh, Mr. Brigham, do you would have any further uh, information you want us to know at this time? No, I think we, we've uh, explained where we're at. I know there's some kind of outstanding questions with Jay, just wanted to make sure we know how to work through those. Yeah. That's all. Yeah. We'll be outside of that. Okay, great. Okay, great. Well, is there anyone from the public that would like to comment? Uh, if so, please identify yourself for the recording secretary. And, uh, yes, sir, if you uh, think you've been here before, but please... Uh, uh, yeah. Tom Ellis, 652 Silver Street. Now... Do any of you know what the lot looked like before Mr. Bennett got a hold of it? No? Yes. Yes. I, I personally it, do it, not. The lot used to go out and it used to go down into a gully. I think that's where the, the drainage issue used to be. It used to be a big gully over there. Then he came in and changed the whole thing. So, I mean, it, the land was only flat for so long, then it dropped to a big gully. Then he came in and just did what he wanted. Okay. And so, yeah. so what I hear you saying, are you saying that, that the, in terms of drainage, it's your position that's better or worse given the, you know, the changes? Well, it used to be just woods. So, I mean, of course he put in the barn. Put two driveways in and a big, I don't know if you guys seen it, out in the back of the barn, it's just gravel. Okay. You know. So I I think the old, the drainage Mike showed has been there for, for a long time. Okay. So I think it was natural runoff. That's great. All right, thank you. you. Okay. Anybody else? to make a comment. One other one. Oh, sure. Um, you mentioned that I talked to the neighbor, and I've met the neighbor out there and talked to him a lot. He's a great guy, and if it saves time or effort, I'd love a chance to go talk to him. I, he loves what I'm doing as well, and um, clearly knows how long or whether or not he feels that there's any issue there. But I mean, it's possible that we just talk to him and, and He's probably, um, from what I've seen so far, and the way he's approached me, and the way he's come over and hung out with me, um, you know, down at that area, that's where we tend to meet up. It, um, I'd be happy to talk with him and just see if he can bring any light or, or help alleviate any concern. As Bob had said, we're contributing less than there was, and um, I don't think that it's of any concern to him at all. It's definitely contained. It's not like it's going to right. worsen in any way. Okay. So well, I, just I see that he hasn't come to the. I mean, I would think that if he was here, he'd identify himself. So no, he hasn't come to the last. I don't have any concerns about this. We're okay. Talking so about yeah. a stream that runs through some undeveloped land. It's too close to the water to do anything with. Ever it's been running there for who knows how long, and it falls in a valley between two natural elevations. It's, there's there's no way you're not going to let walk. There's no way you're going to stop water from going. You cannot. It'd be he's not, okay with it too. Which yeah. it's, it's not a stream. It's just it's more it, of a it, path. It's yeah. yeah. It, it's yeah. something that was created based on whether they took a hilltop off or or just when they put that there. house in there, right? Yeah. And and you know it has a natural grade 
on on that on their uh, land that it, that it runs down. Again, again, my my only real question would be the appropriate service versus what's down there now, and that uh, the comp uh, composite of the gravel driveway is it, it doesn't appear to be that it's a it's built to any kind of a road standard. It's more just somebody came in and, and you know graded and dumped a, a, a run of gravel around it. Um, so it is pretty impervious. It does get uh, uh, the potholes from from holding water, um, but it is it's it's not to any kind of standard that I would say would be easy to say it's 98 point or 98 percent impervious. I would say that it's probably no, the gra the gravel we considered in '89. Yeah, per number. Yeah, and and then the um, you know just the salt runoff. I don't know what the because you you making it green uh, as possible and the new impervious surface with salt and runoff into the salmon falls. Would that be an issue? I don't know. No, that, again, that's getting directed to the bioretention areas when part of their function take, takes that. Big but, part of it was this report that I don't fully understand, but it's a huge part of what Jay reviewed. Yeah. It, it's really strict that we can't do stuff like that. So these numbers take into account how things get treated and, and how long they go before they end up making it back. And at the end, what they determine is that less water is going off of this property than prior. And the, the rule is... We can't exceed what it does. And now it's being treated uh, as opposed to just whatever nature did with it. We're actually running it through special treatment areas that we have to maintain. Um, so I think we not only proved that we've kept it the same, but in, J in that language that you and I, that I don't get all the percentages and stuff, they confirmed and Jay confirmed for the town that it's, it is less than it was before and, and it's being treated. Um, because what's important to you is important to everybody. Yes. Yeah. Huge thing. Yeah. That's how I understand. Thank you. Anybody else from the Board of Commons questions? Um, Seth? Sure. I mean, uh, so we're going to suspend the public here? Is there any comment? Any board members' questions about that? About the comments on that idea? Accept the application is complete. Um, this is the third. Is that public hearing? Oh, I thought we did that. I'm sorry. I'll, I'll make a motion to suspend right. the public hearing. A second? Second. All right. All in favor of uh, suspending the public aye. hearing say aye. 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 All opposed, nay. I'll make a motion to accept the application is complete. Second. Uh, All in favor of uh, accepting the application as complete, say aye. 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 All opposed? Aye. Okay. Keep going. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you. So, um, then I guess we'll see them in October and see how far we get with water. I need to make an edit to the covenant because it references um, something that doesn't exist in the, in the zoning ordinance, so I'm going to rephrase that and I will get it to you and the planning board so that you can all review the final copy. Um, and then we'll, I guess, touch base in October about whatever little things um, Jay had mentioned that might need addressing. Um, so, is, so, well, I was just going to say, is there a will to have a site walk? Does anybody, is anybody unfamiliar with the property or otherwise want to look at what, what this is on site. That's While I would enjoy a site walk, I don't need a site walk. I'm, I'm familiar <laughs> with this. You know. Been around a while. I, I think it's a, a, I'm, I'm very happy to see this project. Okay. So my big question going forward again is the, is the water issue. And Tom, 
Uh, can you tell us how we are going, how are we going to, what's the outstanding information the applicant has to give us and what, what do we need to look for between now and the next hearing? As far as a lot of pressure? Right, about the, the whole the, the whole issue where we want to put it. Yeah, it's, as Caroline mentioned earlier, this, the state is going to be heavily involved. And frankly, because of the uh, commission being a separate entity, I'm really not familiar with that. So we have to have the numbers, where they come from, and who verifies them, I think, is yet to be determined. But we'll need district approval and state approval. We'll definitely need, oh yes, yes. Okay, we need the approval, but um, the numbers, I mean, I'm familiar with Wright Pierce, they're the ones that did the calculations, and they do it all over the place, so it's, you know, if they say the numbers work, then they work, but. Um, but the state will also verify that. Correct, correct. Okay. I think we agreed to do some research in the background, too, but, you know, um, yeah. just to learn. But regardless of what the state requires, I think the planning board ought to require some kind of, maybe this is a heavier lift, I don't know, but um, some kind of proof that the water pressure, even if adequate, whatever that means, um, will not be detrimental. The, addition, the additional dwelling units will not be detrimental to the existing in houses in the neighborhood and so forth. Right. right. So how do they, what are we looking for? I think we're going to find that out in the interim through the state and the engineering firm, and we're just going to have to do some research. Okay. We have parameters that have to be met, and I think that takes into account about others and whatnot. Even in this letter here, he considered it favorable pressure for both domestic use and buyer protection because of these numbers. And there's formulas that I couldn't find. I, I called the uh, Rollinsford Fire Department and didn't hear back, and I called the Dover Fire Department Enforcement Division try to see what these were, and, and I didn't think of the state, so. Well, it, it's not going to matter because, you know, district approval and state approval. Right. And, and if the state would not approve levels that wouldn't work for the fire That's department. Exactly. So, you know. I think there's also the option, if necessary, of, uh, you know, a pump house for pressure increase if it's necessary. Right. So I think that it's all workable. It's just about how do we get there, and and is the pump out is the pump station necessary? I'll work on that. And then I'll and then if there's a pump station, you have to work with the district about yeah. those details. Pressure surprisingly good. Just the good news on all this from last night and tonight is that he would, I have a picture with the water shot across the road. It's it's actually not a bad area as people were suspecting maybe it would be. And your brother's confirmed too. I'll learn more. And Tom, who would be making a recommendation about a pump house or pump station? Would that be the state, or I how, think how it, does that come about? I think that would be up to the planning board. Once we get the numbers back to see whether or not they work, then the planning board can attach a condition of approval that some piece of equipment be installed that will increase the pressure to acceptable levels. But that a lot of that is going to come from the state. And so who would we would roll out as a board, not being, I'm not terribly familiar with pump Stations. How? What would we rely on in terms of? For any um, technical civil engineering stuff, it's, it's Jay Stevens. And he would. Um, he, could, he could talk. He could look at the the talk. state's report and give us comments. Yes. Yes. Great. Right, thank you. Okay. Great. All right. I think that concludes uh, this portion of uh, in terms of the awards and subdivisions. So thank you uh, for coming in to talk to us, and thank you, members of the public, who are here to listen to that portion of our meeting. All right, thank you. Development LLC uh, for a uh, requesting a conditional use permit. Yes, I see. Thank you. Uh, my name is Josh Lins. I'm a major here from Time Derby. Just for the record, our address is 601 Sixth Avenue in New York, New Hampshire. Um, we're here this evening um, representing Knox Marsh Development in relation to a special exception application that we're attempting to present to the Zoning Board of Adjustment. 
and as one of the enumerated requirements in the zone ordinance, um, we've submitted a condition use permit to be before you can see them um, looking for uh, approval of our lot and the use thereon. Um, before I get into this, the uh, procedural, you know, the Caroline and I spoke about before this, um, and we have to beg for a little forgiveness here. Um, it came to my attention today at about 2 o'clock that we submitted the wrong plan set for application. So we have uh, a couple of projects happening in Howard Road right now. We shepherdize our plans at our office electronically by date. Both plans were the same date, same engineering code. Uh, I have in my hand a supplement for application. Uh, I'm going to introduce to you. Um, submitting uh, the correct plan set. Um, my thought with the relief that we're dealing with this evening is that um, I believe that we're still properly in notice. Um, the New Hampshire uh, law regarding notice for this sort of application um, mandates that we have a description, a valid description that sends home letters. And we've done that. Um, and that's under RSA uh, 676 4 I sub B. Um, so we provided the appropriate notice requirements in my mind. I'd be happy to present our application, and if the failure to have the right plans for the last few weeks for the public consumption is too high a bar, um, I would then just ask that we continue to next month. Um, that being said, that pushes us off the whole month. I have a bunch of plans that we could look at, and the relief that we're looking for tonight isn't based on the designs that we're, I mean, it's based on the overall concept of what we're trying to do, but there's no one specific part of this design that we're actually speaking about tonight. That's all kind of beyond the purview of this procedure. I think that really, the relief we're looking for through the ZBA will focus more on setbacks and lot coverage. And um, from the materials we submitted, um, we believe that we uh, satisfy all of the non-conforming lot criteria uh, on its face, uh, on their face. So if I could pass these out and do the presentation, that's kind of what I'm asking to do. And if it seems that it's not having the plans, it's again to have a bar and I just ask that we continue. Any thought? Tom, what do you think? Well, I do I do agree with that. The, um, the special exception appeal that the zoning board has to decide, decide will be forthcoming. And at this stage, According to the 11.321, all the planning board has to do for that special exception is to determine that it's an appropriate location for such a use. So you folks are really just looking at, we have a single family dwelling proposed on a lot, you know, some standard lot, but on a lot, and in a single family zoning district. So. I think, personally, I think if you accept the new plans, um, those would certainly be on file if anyone had come in and looked at the old ones, the, the incorrect ones. But the idea is still, the new ones will be used, of course, going forward with the zoning board, new and better notification, all that stuff has to start again. And uh, certainly it would be an, op uh, an opportunity for anyone. But at, at this point, it, all you folks really have to decide is, is that an appropriate location for that use? So, is, so were the correct abutters noticed? Yes, they were. So we did the entire abutter notification based on, and, and uh, I'm kind of jumping ahead and I apologize, so I did actually think about what I was going to say here tonight, but this is kind of something that came up. Um, but we did, the, the lot that we're talking about is on Howell Road. It's mapped to lot 27. That is the uh, property that we use for our radius and for our abutter notification. Um, the application itself, the letter that we wrote, references the correct lot, um, applies the right standard based on these plans. Uh, this is one of those uh, zoning relief issues. It's very unique to Longsburg. And, you know, I don't know that even a plan set would be required for kind of the, in order to address the actual <coughs> ordinance as it's written for what we're trying to do this evening. So that's kind of why I'm saying that you know, I think that. Um, we can, I can absolutely go through these plans with the board. 
Um, we're more than happy to do that. We're also more than happy to go through the actual special exception criteria, which I believe we meet all of them um, in this scenario, but that's kind of, again, beyond the purview of what we're trying to do tonight. So um, I'd love to pass these out and, and kind of give you our Any thoughts, good? I, I, I would have no problem hearing your presentation tonight because our part is somewhat minimal in, in this whole procedure at this point. So I, I you know, probably notice on proper plans and how I, I would have no problem. With that. Well, to be clear, it's not at this point. It's it's th this is the only time this would go through planning. If 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 this is approved here tonight and it goes to zoning, it does not come back to planning. But even still, what we're looking at. As, as Tom has described, our, our, our part of this is... Is it an appropriate lot for... Yeah. So it's, it's, a narrow focus. It's, a, it's a narrow focus, there it is. Yes. It's, it's pretty clear. That's, okay. my, that's my thought. I wouldn't have a problem with the presentation. And I'd be happy to explain why that is for the public. For the I think you should public. distribute the plan. Sure. Thing. All right, right great. Sure. Still for myself. I have actually spent a little bit Thank you. All right. Um, so uh, we're here this evening, like I said. Um, Based on uh, the need for uh, finding from the um, that quote under section 11.3 uh, sub 2 sub 1, that the post site uh, here that's uh, lot 27 or that 2 is found to be an appropriate location for such a use by the planning board. Um, the use that we are proposing and will propose to the zoning board um, is that of a two family residential home. Uh, it's a relatively small home. Um, I'm sorry. That'd be a single um, family. Uh, I'm sorry, single I said single, single family. family. Uh, so two, a two bedroom, single family uh, residential home. Um, that, and this property, uh, Lot 27, is in uh, Rollinsford's SR zone. Uh, that's a medium density zone. And I would um, assert that a single family home is a low density use. Um, in uh, the SR zone, um, section uh, 6.9 uh, sub A5, um, the ordinance defines uh, single family homes as one family dwellings. And in that table, uh, this is a permitted use in the SR zone. So the use that we're proposing is expressly permitted by the ordinance um, and is minimal. But in that it's a, it's a medium density zone, this is a kind of low density use. Um, the reason that we're here is that in uh, section 11, <coughs> there are five enumerated requirements to get a special exception in the for with the DA. The first requirement, as I said, is this uh, fact finding uh, from the planning board that the use is appropriate. Appropriate is not defined, and I'm not surprised by that, in the zoning ordinance, right? Very common descriptor. I know I struggle sometimes. I, I seem to, with my son, I constantly define things, right? And I can't do it. All I do is give him synonyms, and he looks at me with a blank stare. So I had to go get the actual definition from Maryland's uh, of appropriate. Um, it's defined as especially suitable or compatible. So Maryland's gave me two synonyms. For us to use <laughs> that being said, um, I think at a very basic level, uh, this is an appropriate use of this property in that it is a single family home in a zone that expressly permits single family homes as, as a use. Um, I'm more than happy to go through on the plans. But you can see this is a, a very, it's almost a perfect triangle. It's a kind of a very odd shaped lot. Um, without getting too far into the weeds on the ordinance and non-conforming lots, um, we do meet all of the setback requirements and all of the septic requirements that are kind of the bar of entry for building on a non-conforming lot under the laws for ordinance. Um, so we do meet all of that, which is how we kind of 
got sifted through the ordinance and then have presented this to you tonight. Um, that's really it. It's a very basic application. Um, again, I think we're just asking that you would make, a, make this finding to say that a single family home is an appropriate use in a residential zone. So residential use, residential zone. And I'm happy to answer any questions that you have. Uh, first, Tom, any comment to the wording of the request? I, I, I think he made an excellent, excellent presentation. Um, I do note that probably septic is, is two bedroom because of the size wouldn't incorporate some. Yeah. So, I mean, usually we would see a three or a four bedroom mm -hmm. home, but because of the size of the lot um, and its constraints. But as far as the setbacks go, if it gets approved here and goes to the zoning board for special exception and it gets approved, um, ultimately with the building permit, what we'll be looking for is a foundation certification that the, that the location is indeed in compliance with all the zoning setbacks. So, I mean, as far as the, the, the scope for the planning board, I really see no issue. Okay. Any uh, other members of the planning board are, are have any comment? Yeah, I see what he means about being the triangle. It's a tough lot. I mean, realistically, the highest and best use for this would be this, this tiny little house. Not tiny, but, you know, this, this size house. Yeah. It's, it's the best use for that parcel shaped as it is. And you'll note, we, we're proposing uh, a well release, which we normally do for something like this. So they, they really, the engineers have accounted for um, well, septic, or separated on the slot. And it is, it is the small, you can see the interior triangle, you see that's the, those are the setbacks. And so this really does just kind of fit right in. Do any members of the public have any comment on the request for a uh, conditional use permit? Yes, yes sir. Would you please identify yourself? Uh, My name is Bruce Yuck. I live at Nine Howe Road. I'm the closest abutted to this piece of property. And um, usually the plans are available before the meeting for abutters to look at. He's bringing this at the last minute. I have not had a chance to look at so I can make any qualified questions of what's going on. I would like to probably even have this put off till the next time, but tell I can look at these. Now he, okay. he's brought plans in at the last minute, and I have absolutely no idea what they're doing. Okay. None whatsoever. All right. Is anybody Tom? I I think that's a valid point. Carol and I discussed that. And I relayed that to Josh. That it is it is up to the planning board, but. Um, that's up to the planning board. I mean, sir, we do have one. Yeah, well, they, they, they showed up right sure. here at the meeting. Sure. They weren't available before the meeting. Correct. You're right. But these are the plans that are going to go forward to the special exception application with the Zoning Board of Adjustment, to which there'll be another notification, another public hearing. And you'll have, if you have specific complaints, I would think if, at this point, if you don't think a single-family house belongs on this lot, I think just like the board has a narrow focus, you would have a narrow focus that's the only thing you can really address. The Zoning Board of Adjustment for the special exception, they're going to ask for a whole list of things, and that's where you get into the, into the technicalities. And Would it be possible that I could at least take a quick look at one of these? Sure, you, you can have this one. Yeah. And we are happy to answer as many questions as you might have. And I do apologize for the, the uh, mix-up of the plans. For five minutes to let them trust the new plan, so it's going to be spent there. We can just, but we certainly can do it five minutes before, so. Yeah. I want you to feel like you have time to review it, sir, so please uh, take your time, let us know when you're ready. I think it's fair. Um, perhaps you're going to ask if there's any other butters for Yeah, sure, you are, yes, yes. Are there any butters here who uh, would like to comment on this? Uh, proposal while this gentleman review the plans. Well, I'm the only abutter. Okay. I have Sorry, like three quarters of the land around him. Okay. And the other piece belongs to the Crockett's Crossing uh, apartments. I, 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 I where did that poorly what I should have said is any of the members of the public who would like to comment on the uh, Yeah, well, we, we live at 27 Albro. Can you tell me your name so. and your address? Donna Hapgood, 27 Albro. 
So we're just here basically seeing what's going on too. We got a letter also, so. Thank you. I was just going to ask that. Yeah, we all received the same notification for the yes, special exception meeting. Yep. There's no garage that will be on this house, just the house itself? Just the house itself. That area to the right is just basically a parking area. That's right. Okay. stuff a uh, 10 pounds in a two pound bag my opinion and I just want you to understand it's sort of not trying yeah. to um, is it today is not the day the real meat potatoes yeah, okay. is going to be the ZBA I mean I'm, I'm happy to hear your comments but just so you know that that's going to be where all that arguments come in up in a consideration I should say. Septic system, would that be a mound system like across the street or flat in the ground? Uh, I can send you over the plans for it. I'll um, we'll see what Chris Berry did. I want to say, you know. Uh, for the record, uh, this is Robert Baldwin, one of the principals at Knoxville. So it looks like it is going to be mounted up on. It will be a mound system? It will be. So it looks like it has a finished floor height of 140 and then it goes up two feet at its highest point at 142. Okay, so system that would just put it across the street. Yeah. Okay, yeah. thank you. The house itself will be a little bit raised, so um, you're going to lose a lot of that mound. It's not going to be like across the street where you have just a mound in the middle of, of nowhere. That's not preferred. Outside of technical questions, that? Outside of, you know, something that would be brought up at the zoning board, the only other thing aesthetic-wise would be coming in the street and seeing a mound septic system on both sides of the road as you come in that road. Because it's right, it's showing on the edge right opposite the one that was just put in, in the house next door across the street. And, and I do value your comment. I think that ultimately, again, the basic issue yeah. here is whether a, a single-family residence is appropriate for a conditional use in the actual Design will be hammered on more from the ZBA potentially, yeah. I believe. And feel free to correct me any members of the board. And then we have many more times to speak. Anything that you think of as you go home tonight, there'll be other chances okay. for you to speak and be heard, and you'll be noticed ahead of time. Isn't that correct? Yeah. With other meetings as an abutter. Yeah. Well, well, like I said, and all we're looking at today yeah. is is it, is it appropriate to put a house there? That's the only question we're looking at. That's it. Yeah, that's the only thing, as I understand, we're looking at right now. So you have time even leaving here tonight. If you yeah. forgot something, don't even worry about it. Take it home, sleep on it. You, yeah. you have plenty of, you know, you'll be noticed. Also more than happy to um, put a way out if I could get an address or email address. We can uh, right there behind it. Sure, we, yeah, we can, we can get you some, we get you copies of everything um, if you'd like. Because yeah, uh, like I said, this is the first I've seen this you brought in tonight. So I was in total dock exactly what was going on. But your site, the, your map that you had was actually for the house across the street that was submitted. You're, you're, you're correct. Yeah. Yeah. All right, so do you, so do you want uh, more time or? Uh, no, uh, any questions or concerns that would, you, like you said, we're happy to be brought up with the... Well, I, I, don't, I want you to feel comfortable. I mean, we're happy to consider suspending the, until next time. But I want you to, if, if you feel you've had enough chance to look at it, great. And if not, you know, let it, us... It's an awful small lot, 3.4 acres. And you're putting in a very small house there. All right. And like I said, that's that's the meat and potatoes for the yeah. zoning board, the ZBA. Yeah. All right. So... Um, Good. I'm all set. Okay. All right. 
Any uh, last calls for uh, public comment? All right, seeing none, um, I think that um, my, any, any members have any comments before we, I think it would be appropriate to take a vote on whether or not to grant a conditional use permit as set forth in the plan uh, filed tonight. All right, so. I'll close one quick. Yeah, I Excuse me, Glenn? Yeah, no, I'd make a motion. If you, I'd make a motion to accept that it's uh, a reasonable um, lot to put a, a single family dwelling okay. for the CBA to make up. And I'll second that. All right. Uh, you okay with that wording of that yes, time? All right. <clears throat> Thank you for your comment there. All, right, uh, all in favor? Of the motion, uh, say aye. 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 All opposed, say nay. The ayes have it. Congratulations, Mr. Taylor. Thank you very much. Much. All right. I believe that the last matter on the agenda, and thanks everyone for coming, here is uh, approval of minutes. No, I should have other rights. We have one thing under okay, so other business, which is that. Yes. Okay. Uh, and that's so people are here on this. No, no one is no, here, here on this. And, and nor does anybody have to be here for this. I see. Okay. So the next item is the Oak Street property mm. of Kevin Lisa Turgeon. And this is the property which the CBA, well, first they came in front of the uh, of us for a conditional use. And then they went from the CBA. And uh, prevailed. Uh, we're granted a, a variance to build uh, this house on these two these two uh, houses on these uh, non-conforming lots. And the proposal behind the uh, the lot merger is that they're taking two smaller non-conforming lots and putting making the one larger non-conforming lot, which still while still is non-conforming, is generally viewed positively under the law it might have the right less time. non less I mean, non if you greater I should say right. They can do a greater lot, the overall lot's less non conforming. Okay. All right. Any comments from the members of the so for voting on this you don't know it's here in Brooks Yeah. Yes. Okay. Any members wish to make any comments on this proposal? Voluntary no, over the same control, no mortgages. And it's part of the approved. And it's already part of the non -voting. So it's non -voting. Okay. Just okay. All right. No comments, Tom? No, sir. All so right. Very straightforward. All right. <laughs> so just dotting my eyes across my T's. All right. I'll entertain a motion. If you want to make a motion to. I'll make a motion to accept this bond to allow permit or approve this voluntary law. All right. Is there a second? Second. All right. Fantastic. All right. All in favor say aye. 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 All opposed say nay. The ayes have it. Great. All right. Now. I'm going to have to table approval of minutes because although they did, were done in the time period, I don't think I sent them to everybody. I apologies. And I can see because it's in my uh, drafts. Okay. So why That's don't we give away? Yeah. It's not the same. <laughs> Right. I have best intentions, I guess I have a very, uh, there's a lot of squirrels in my bright shiny things in the <laughs> So, um, we're, so we're going to table the approval minutes till next time, yeah. or, of the last meeting. Is there any correspondence that uh, we need to be concerned with other than what we wrote with it tonight? No. Um, I take that back. Um, I believe I emailed to all of you oh, the, the um, shore, shoreline permit. Um, I can bring it out into my office. It's part of the um, Silver Street application. I only have one copy. I apologize for not bringing it to light while the applicant was here, we can certainly ask questions of the applicant if there are any um, at the next meeting. It's really pretty straightforward, just a state required um, process for being so close to the river. Okay. 
So they just, this is just that they're notifying us that they sent an August 29, 2019 shoreline permit application. There's nothing for us to act on in regard to this. Correct. All right. We are holding it. It is for public view. I sent it along as well to the Conservation Commission um, and Select Board for everybody's notification. Okay, fantastic. All right. Uh, okay, so I think that covers. Uh, quick question. Yes. So, what it, what's next with this? Because John. They need to. So, so let's allow the chairman to sign it if he would, and then we'll have the owners come in and sign Do it. You know the letter and that, and then to put it in the. Um, yes. In the lot five. Yes. Thank you. You guys must have been working at a while because you basically said, you want to keep that? And she said, yeah, put it in the, uh, <laughs> yeah, yeah. And we, okay, finish your time. Yeah. <laughs> all right. I like that. That's kind of like that. <laughs> put the thing in the thing. Uh -huh. Uh -huh. So our next meeting is going to be the first Tuesday in October. So yes, which is like the first. What's that? Yes, it's the, it's actually yeah, the first. Actually first. Okay, 7 p.m., all right. Uh, is there a second? Second. second. All right, all in favor say aye. 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 All opposed. <laughs> you guys have a thank you, everyone. Thank you all. Thank you.